What is up, everybody? Welcome to another... Today, I want to talk about something that's been going on for a little while. So, I wanted to discuss something where there's been a rise of a new party. If we can look throughout the past, uh, you know, almost two decades, I guess. Yeah. You've always seen, uh, you know, this around here, right? This is in Germany. I know it's not in America, but... America and like Europe, Europe in general is very similar to what's been going on here. So the CDU and CSU are combined. So in reality, the SPD is kind of one of the most popular in the party. But back to the point, a lot of stuff switched over with AFD, which formed uh, right around 2013. Didn't take off that much until around past 2022. Yeah, they uh, started making uh, TikToks and started to try and appeal to young people, which is why you clicked on this video. You're going to talk about the country, how 16-year-olds voted for the first time. The results are scary. Young people are switching. I'm telling you, young people are becoming much, much more conservative and they're realizing uh, the truth. And um, we need to discuss this. I want to really talk about this because young people are going through a lot of pain and suffering. They're dealing with an economy that's destroying them, dealing with a society that doesn't really seem to care. They're dealing with like so many problems. I don't want to be a complainer. I think we need to create solutions and try and strive for greatness and to be better. But that also means we need to really uh, work in a system that helps us too. So we're just going to talk about how 16 year olds voted right now. This is for the EU election. So the entire EU, uh, they have their own like, election system. So this also accounts for other countries. We'll go into America soon. So the, fir the last time the European Union voted, five years ago, teenagers across the continent were taken to the streets en masse, demonstrating for serious climate protection policies. They had no say they in uh, vain or decisions that would define their lives for years to come. We'll go to school if you keep the climate cool. They taunted with a verve, justifying their audacious skipping class to protest. Survey uh, show... The survey showed back then that people, usually 18 to 24 year old back in democracies on both sides of the Atlantic, tend to cast their ballots for more reform minded, left to right center parties rather than those on the right. This was why European conservatives had long opposed giving 16 and 17 year olds the vote, even though older teenagers are legally permitted to work, drive vehicles, and pay federal income taxes. So, for context, you know, a lot of in teenagers, or I guess past the teenage age, they're usually were be seen as the pro climate protest. You know, the people like uh, who's that one girl, Greta Thunberg? Yeah, Greta Thunberg was. Is, she was kind of seen as representing the youth. How dare you? Yeah, she's like 20 or 21 right now, and indeed. In the 2019 European Parliament elections, the youngest voters turned out in droves because now they uh, they changed it from the 16 to 17 year old to vote. Even though, and so this kind of really made a lot of um, interesting changes. We'll say this this was a while back, 2019, right? And they called it a green wave. A third of Germans, uh, young Germans, uh, voted for the Greens. Fast forward five years later, it's a very different story. This European Parliament election, which wrapped up on Sunday, was the first in which Germans as young as 16 were eligible to vote since the age was lowered from 18. So now, this new election, they're adding 16. And this was insane, because I never thought I would see this. Even though I'm 16, I'm, like, I'm the exact uh, age demographic for this, except I'm in America. And in Austria, Belgium, Malta, and Greece, 16 or 17 year olds have the right to cast their ballots. These minors finally had a say on those issues and will uh, affect them for years, if not decades to come. What a shocking then, in coming days that they're, they're under, after the 80th anniversary of D-Day, that many German first-timers threw their votes disproportionately behind the far-right Alternative for Deutschland, or AFD party. What a shock then, in coming days after the 80th anniversary of D-Day, that many uh, German first-timers threw their votes right for the, for the new AFD. 
This election, 16% of 16 to 24 year olds voted AFD, up to 11 percentage points from five years ago. They went up by, by 11 percent. That is insane. That would be like Trump winning the election with 60 percent of the vote. That would be more than uh, Obama's margin. So this is quite, quite a shift. To be sure, the majority of teens didn't vote for the far right, but the increase in numbers who did is uh, nonetheless alarming. The AFD, whose members repeated banned Nazi slogans and sound barely veiled racism and Islamophobia. Yeah, whatever. Who cares? AFD is not like a fascist party, but they're attacked for saying, you know, a lot of truth and a lot of, uh, you know, true stuff. And it's really sad to see. Claimed almost as much as the youth vote as the victorious Christian Democratic Union, Christian Social Union, right, and the CDU or CSU Alliance. And far more than the Greens. So, a lot of people voted for Christian parties and the alternative for Deutschen in uh, Germany. Exit polls showed that the topic of mi migration swung many voters of all ages to the right. A full 95% of German AFD voters said German, uh, Germany should limit the flow of foreigners and refugees in Germany. So that's like a big reason why people are now trying to join this new, uh, you know, right-wing part. The new right-wing parties, people... You know, a lot, of, a lot of people are upset with the immigration, and we've been told for years that we can't discuss about it because it would be too racist or, you know, um, what's wrong with, uh, you know, the, we're humanitarian, we gotta let everyone in, but, you know, we gotta care about ourselves, too. It's not being selfish. It, it's just better if we were to take care of ourselves and help ourselves and improve instead of just trying to sabotage our nation by letting so many foreigners in and it's not because you know it's not to say that they're inherently all bad there's some good individuals but we can't be looking at this at an individual basis we need to look at the overall we need to look at everything around us and what it tells us is that the more they're in the more they're uh foreigners there the worse things are going to get we're dealing with a problem we need to solve it before we're ready to let anyone else in this year, AFD's uh, margin of scandals and grow longer by the week, and whatever, whatever. You can read this if you like, but I find a lot of that stuff really stupid. They show general unhappiness of the post-pandemic here. Yeah, they're showing how you know, people are tired of this stuff, you know, and they're going to support uh, nationalism because nationalism is going to give them something, right? And here's the big one I wanted to point out, too they're going to TikTok, right? They're trying to reach young people through social media, which, that's pretty clever. You know, um, if you look at the Democrats and Republicans, they're old, they're boomer parties. They don't, they don't care for the youth, and they want to ban TikTok. They're going to um, try and ban the app, which, sure, whatever, I, I, I don't care for the app, but like, scenario, there's a lot of young people and they're so heavy on banning it. Why not focus on everything? You know, what about Facebook? You know, they don't care for Facebook. All right, um, and the other big thing, why they may grow up more conservative. There was a uh, time not so long ago when the young, uh, youth seemed destined to be liberal forever. Right back then, right, uh, throughout the 1960s, Right, uh, they were, they were usually a lot more liberal. The less than a generation after young people were marching for civil rights against the Vietnam War, they voted overwhelmingly for Ronald Reagan. Right, um, you know that stuff happened. Right, they used to vote very, um, very liberal policies. Right, who is most in favor of all this stuff? Right, like look, out out of everything that's happened from 1950 to today, and. This is now from the doing of the boomers who put all this stuff uh, into place. They favor same-sex marriage, marijuana, legalization, stricter gun laws, citizenship for illegal immigrants and an activist government that fights climate change and inequality. All this stuff, right, that, that originally started with the boomers. And, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of millennials and Gen Z now uh, are with that, but it's kind of a lot less of a push than what the boomers were doing. The, the boomers shifted everything way, way more. All this stuff, right, when the boomers are on power doing this stuff, and 
you know, millennials kind of, you know, millennials and Gen Z were with it, but a lot of them today, it's kind of split. Gen Z's very split, and it's very strange. They're very, um, it, you can't just look at it face value. You can't just simplify and say, oh, Gen Z's all liberal and stuff. No, it's like, uh, I would say a third split. Right? One third, I would say, is part of the very far left. One third, I would say, is, you know, in the middle. And then one third, I would say, are big, big conservatives, like Nick Fuentes type. The temporary nature of the 1960s should serve as a reminder that politics change. And, and, and then, by the way, about, the, like, the Reagan thing. Around Ronald Reagan just gave the promise that he, better America. A lot of... And a lot of young people wanted that. He never gave it to them. And I think that's why a lot of them just said, Frick you, Ronald Reagan, we're voting. You know, we're, we're out of here, you know. People like Reagan, Clinton failed. And were pretty, pretty despicable in a lot of the stuff they've done. The simplest terms of Democrats control the White House, and now the Senate, at a time when the country is struggling. Economic growth has been disappointing for almost 15 years now. And, you know, it's like, we are the most, the biggest nation on earth, or the biggest economy, or the highest GDP ever, but like, we're dealing with a lot of uh, big crises right now. We can't afford homes, we can't afford, you know, most stuff anymore, the groceries are getting more expensive, no one can pay for children, and that stuff needs to be addressed, but, um, man, it's just, our parties can't do anything right, our groups, and these interest groups can't aren't going to do anything to help out young people, and that's why they're now striving to try and get out of this old system to look for more extremist groups. And I think it's already been talked enough about that. I want to move on since this has kind of been hit over so many times. I want to talk about something a little more interesting. So-called millennials, many of the problems their roots. George Washington, or <laughs> George Washington, roots in George W. Bush's presidency, right? Again, it's the same thing kind of with Reagan. That's how uh, Obama got into power. Obama's whole thing, right, is what was his shtick? It was, we will make change. And he never did that, so they voted Trump, right? Uh, the youngest eligible voters in the next presidential election, they're too young to remember much about the Bush years or the excitement surrounding the first Obama presidential campaign. They instead are coming of age of the Democratic president who often seems unable to fix the world's problems. We're in a period in which the federal government is simply not performing, says Paul Taylor. Uh, that can't be good for Democrats. And, um, let's see. Generation students heat out ideological identities. People are particularly shaped by events as they're first being aware of the world. Starting as young as 10 years old, the new analysis of political science. Uh, God's creating an online interactive graph. And uh, track the political views of every birth. Here since 1937, because race adds a variable, it applies not reliably to uh, whites. Yeah, like, um, it's very split up when it comes to different races, but that's a conversation for another time. The generation that came to uh, came of age during the five presidential terms of Franklin Roosevelt and Harry Truman being Democrat for its entire life. So, have uh, those young liberals in the 1960s. Who learned American politics through the glamour of John F. Kennedy, the babies of the late 60s and early 70s, who entered political consciousness during the Reagan years, leaned Republican. Uh, yeah, these are the the two that just they're they're awful. No one wants to be like them. They they've ruined everything. They're no longer young. They ruined their entire lives, and a lot of them are just really depressed and. Dying and shriveling up. Uh, not all of them, but a good chunk of them. And they threw that all away. And now, Gen Z has to clean up, clean up the mess, man. And these are, I yeah, the Boomers and Light Gen X. And not like Gen X. Gen X is okay, but not. They're they just aren't it, there. I, I wouldn't say they're there. I. I I have nothing really to say I, uh, with Gen X, and then Millennials, I think Millennials have been scammed the most, and now they're kind of just aging, and now I, I really have no idea what's going to be the future Millennials, I just pray that they change and become better. 
the boomers uh, boomers are done for man they um they've caused so much of a mess they really they really caused most of the uh, problems of America and then they blame us and now they're gonna like you know one million two million of them die a year so ten years expect very very interesting change in the United States and how it runs we're probably gonna have much more extremes happening you're gonna have a lot more uh, change happen within the country that's what I notice will happen whether it's conservative or liberal and um, yeah, our country's just going to break apart man if like what Abraham Lincoln said house cannot stand upon itself or you know we're gonna be a broken house right that's that's just the problem these identities are more useful guide to American politics and largely useless cliche about adults starting off liberal and slowly becoming more conservative. Yeah, it's very, it, it really can be very different. You, it's just these, yes, you know, these stereotypes are stereotypes for a reason, but now it's becoming less like a stereotype as things change. Among today's teenagers, Democrats do start with some big advantages. For one thing, the next generation of voters is an ethically diverse group. Um, that's not really the best anymore since... Lex and Latinos are now voting more and more for conservatives. I don't know how long, though. A lot of them like Trump, but do they like any of the other Republican candidates? About 45% of American citizens in their teenage years are either Latino or a member of a racial minority, compared with only 29% of citizens 20 and older. And Republicans continue to struggle mindedly uh, among non-whites in ways that are may transcend tr uh, generational identities. Almost 35 years have passed since Reagan reportedly said Hispanics are already Republican, they just don't know it. Yeah, like, <laughs> that didn't age well. His point was that Hispanic voters would follow the same political path as early immigrant groups like Irish, like Italians and Irish and move right as they assimilated. Yeah, well guess what? You gave amnesty to them and just you're an idiot. I have nothing else to say. He's an idiot, bro. <laughs> if you thought, oh, just let them in, let them, they'll do on their own. No, back then, they were tough, right? They were saying, you have to speak English, you have to do this and that, and they, I, I'm not in favor of a forced, a highly forced assimilation, but I would say it should be socially enforced, enforced. It should just be looked down upon to you know, uh, burn the American flag. Well, yeah, that should be, like, maybe probably ban. I would say I would ban that. But it should be looked down upon to do things that would be anti-American or anti-Christian. It should be Christianity as the leading point. But Reagan appears to have a bit wrong in this score. True. And Asian Americans, too. Uh, similarly, they, yeah, they're remaining Democrat. And um, big one I want to look at, too. So it's saying, yeah, they're becoming more diverse. I know that too. Gen Z is becoming a little more diverse. I'm becoming more of a minority, whatever. But at the same time, a lot of them are waking up to become better. I think Hispanics got a bright future as they, um, you know, as ahead of them. They just got really like change. They got joined in with uh, with white America. Same thing with uh, blacks. I I just wish they would have changed, but a lot of them are. Not doing this, and this is why it's become more of a minority. I think it's gonna wake up more white people, and we're gonna have more race realism. And I'm not gonna say if I'm on that side or not, but you could check out my Twitter. This uh, Manic is likely to be Hillary Clinton's biggest weakness, either a candidate or as a president. Talk about the Clinton era, 1990s boom, as she uh, surely do, to distance herself from today's economy. Go far with voters too young to have any memories of the 1990s. Some political analysts believe that teenagers are already showing less allegiance to the Democrat Party uh, than Americans in their 20s, based on the recent polling data. Mr. Obama's second term lacks the political dramas first. The Democrats were passing sweeps uh, legislation. The Tea Party sprang up in reaction. But the generation nature of politics means the second long term so some uh, enormous political import. So this is 2014, talking about how they're, they might be becoming more conservative, and now they have actually. So this is actually really cool, man.
Yeah, and with the victory of the AFD, it's, I think, really, really shaken up how we think traditionally. We gotta think differently. That's the key point. We have to think differently. We have to think distinct. And this is important because we can't just be thinking the same way. We have to think about, um, not just traditionally, but also with, like, the Christian Bible, right, and uh, the Christian God, what we need to do is we need to look at what the, the Bible says. We have to go back to that specific uh, point, and that's the only way we will be saved, right? This world will get worse, but I'm just saying as long as we have, you know, a good amount of young people trying to, you know, go back to God, and maybe, you know, uh, voice more conservative points of views, I think there's still some hope. I don't think elections will do anything. It doesn't matter if the AFD wins. You know, who really cares? Because I, ideally, they should be a party where they can just give a good voice. It doesn't matter if they win elections or not. The point is they're doing the right thing because Christ will return and things will be better when Christ returns. Now, I'm not, sitting, uh, I'm not saying to sit around and do nothing. I'm saying at least have some kind of stand up for the right thing. But... Don't expect that we're going to bring back the monarchies of the past. That will never happen again, likely, until Christ returns. Because only Christ can save us. And, um, yeah, I'm saying, man. I like how there's a lot more... Oh, shit. I like how there's a lot more conservatism happening with Europeans and Americans. We need to wake up. And I think we need to have these interesting conversations. And we need to... Um, really think like, think like Christ, think like uh, true conservatives, not these boomer libertarians. We're not with that anymore. This is gone. It's dead. It's dead. And uh, the Reddit one, right, do you think monarchy can come back? And a lot of, you know, I think it actually can. Uh, this is, I have no idea what they're going to say, but I think it probably wouldn't go all the way, but I do think, I have hoped that Young people are going to become better, and things are going to change, maybe for the better, until Christ returns. We just got to create a better setup for ourselves, and we need to all come back to church. That's what we need to do. Go to church, pray to God every day, pray every day. This is what's best for all of us. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and uh, yeah, I guess this is the end. I just thought this would be interesting to talk about, and Bennett out.